Hi YouTube, we've made some changes this past month. Biggest one being my new wire shelving unit used to keep all of my live planted vivariums. Um, I've got my tree boas that you are all quite familiar with. Again, these are Candoya carinata carinata. Two of them are out showing themselves. It's been a little warm here, so they're down in the cooler bottom of the cage. Let's see if I can can't find her face. Um, but that's my gray and black tree boa. And then over here, my tan and brown one. Both females. These are communal snakes and they do great with lots of humidity. Um, they're Indonesian, so I keep their temperatures usually um, on the warm near the top about high 80s-ish and then down at the bottom is um, room temperature mid 70s usually is what this room holds with all these lights in here. Up next is my newest addition, um, old friends. These are my red-eyed tree frogs, so they're uh, same animals but just a new tank for them. It's a little bit thrown together. I mean, I don't have a background. The goal of this was to have clean glass that's going to be easy for me to wipe down and keep clean. Um, I have covered three sides with aquarium background. Um, there's a bunch of plants that you've all seen before. There's a few new ones. Um, but this is uh, my new habitat for the red-eyed tree frogs, all five of them. I did end up collecting my own magnolia leaves and boiling them and using that as the main ground cover just because I've heard so much about um, them being able to eat dirt or accidentally ingesting sphagnum moss and things like that and I really don't want them to ever get impacted. So we're going to try out the magnolia leaves for now and see how it goes. I'm a little concerned that they might not be able to eat their crickets before they're all able to hide. But um, we'll see how it goes. I've, I've read everywhere and heard that it's a, it's a safer way of keeping them that still looks kind of nice other than just paper towel or a bare bottom, which clearly is not something I like to do <laughs> with my live planted tanks. Um, this plant here is quite pretty. It's a prayer plant. It's a common house plant. doesn't like a whole lot of light, so we'll see how it does in, in the tank. Um, that was, this is one of my males. See if he's going to open his eyes. Come on, we want to see you. There he is. So that's one of the boys, and then one of my larger females. You can see how much bigger she is compared to him. Um, that's a female down there. So two of the five are out and visible today. Let's see if I can wake her up for you. Come on, little girl. There she is. So they've moved right in. They're all quite comfortable. Again, it's a, it's a little bit thrown together. It's not. Um, it doesn't have a nice background, but for his purposes, I think it's going to work pretty well for these guys. Someday I'll get into dart frogs and I'll do. I'll go all out and make my own custom background. But for these guys, it's just going to be m much cleaner and much easier for me to keep them uh, with bare glass walls. And then next to them, of course, are my crested geckos. The tank hasn't been growing in very well. I didn't have great lights on this tank when I first set it up. I've just recently, since I've just got this shelving unit, was able to put on my three foot T5 fluorescent hood. So the plants in the crested gecko tank should be perking up and showing a lot of new growth here in the next week or so. So I apologize that it's looking a little sad but it will perk up by the time you guys see it next. Cresteds are doing great. I've got males and females, or one male and my two females, and they all seem to really like hiding in the ficus plant. That's her favorite spot. And my other female is usually back behind there, or down in the hole, but she's not down there today, so she's probably behind the, probably behind the cork. And then, of course, on the next shelf down, I have two 10-gallon low tanks, 
and these are housing my red-eyed croc skinks. You can see I have room for probably two more of these, so I'm going to be getting new croc skinks in soon, and hopefully we'll put out some eggs this year and get some out to you guys who have been waiting for so long. This shelf is very cool. It's um, a rolling shelf, so it actually comes out and makes the tanks very easy to service. I ordered these tanks from my local reptile shop. Um, they already had, they sell this dimension tank. It was just a matter of getting the tanks where the screen opened from the, the shorter side instead of the longer side like they normally do. Makes it much easier to change the water and I can check on them without bothering them too much. Let's see where I've got one of them was out earlier today. There he is. These guys, I swear, I clean their water and 10 minutes later they're in it dirtying it up again. But there's one of the boys of the two pairs that I have. And again, I'll be getting two more pairs very soon. My camera is not focusing. But these are their new digs. Again, I use the stainless steel bowls because they're so much easier to disinfect and keep clean with these guys. They just are so, um, they drag all kinds of stuff into their water bowls and this is just the best way to go. It's not certainly not the prettiest way, but for their health and cleanliness, it's what we decided to go with. And then of course, down on the floor, baby cresteds. I sold my two phantom pinstripes, however I do still have a patternless red, which is finally starting to show a little bit of color. This camera doesn't show it very well, but he's starting to finally get some red blushing on his sides. It's starting to develop. Yeah, the camera's just showing him as still mostly brown, but as he gets older, hopefully that color will show up better on camera if I don't sell him before that. This is my little, I guess it's a flame from what I was reading in the Crested Gecko Morph Guide. So that's going to be a red flame, a couple little spots, but not enough to really be called a Dalmatian. And then my red Dalmatian, who's gotten quite large and developing more spots every couple of weeks and this guy is getting redder as he's getting bigger too. So those are the three that I have now. I haven't found any more eggs with my Cresteds but that's fine. I have more babies than I can deal with right now. We also have lots of Leos. I've got a total of eight babies that are going to be up for sale. I know the lighting's really bad, so I've got a flashlight to help show them off a little bit better. I've got a couple Max Snows. This is a Max Snow. This is, oh, sorry. This is one hatched out nice and uh, pretty bands, just clean bands all down his back and his tail starting to develop his spots now. His or hers, they were incubated in the mid 80s so it's a mix of we can get both males and females out of this group. So that's one of the Max Snows. Let's see what we got in here. I'm only going to show a few. This is one that was hatched out from the Super Snow Male and I believe a patternless albino female my camera really isn't wanting to work today, is it? But it's got the Eclipse eyes, which is kind of cool. And this is the second one I've hatched out like this. And then the sibling, I believe it's down here. Oh, no, that's another, that's another Max Snow starting to develop some spotting. This is a Het Diablo Blanco. So, white, 
and really not showing up on the camera, sorry guys, there we go, white with um, the albino eyes. So the eyes unfortunately on this one are not are not the dark red color that I wanted. Um, this is a 66% head Diablo, I believe. So that's four of the Leos that I have available. I do have four more. It's just going to take me forever to go through them all. In other big news, all of the hogs, as you can see, are out of the fridge, awake. We've each had one meal. We're going to feed them one more time and then put boys with girls and hopefully get some eggs real soon. Very exciting. We've got a, um, if you remember, the albino het annery male, who is going to be paired with my annery het albino female. So I've got a nice pair of snowmakers. And I've got an anaconda het albino, who will be going with either my female, who is a possible head albino, or my nicer looking female, which is 100% head albino. I haven't decided yet. He may get two girlfriends this year. And of course, the reticulated pythons. Here's the youngest guy here, who is always hungry. I won't take him out because he's always snappy as soon as I pull him out. So that's the baby male. And the bigger boy is back here. A nice small rat in his belly. They've really calmed down quite a bit. My female, however, was off food for a little while and pushing a lot, so we ended up getting her this. Um, this one uh, we're actually borrowing. Clearly, we don't need signs to not tap on the glass in our own home. Um, so we're borrowing this for her. She is, let me grab my flashlight. She is all the way in the back under the hide. She's loving it. We've got a nice little heat pad there for her. Um, it's really helped with the pushing and she's actually back on food and starting to gain weight. So um, if we get lucky and we can put enough weight on her, she may put out some eggs for us late this season. Otherwise, we may have to wait till next year before we can put the male in with her. But really pleased with this vision cage. It's a two by two by one foot, um, or a two two one, I guess is what they call it. Um, we are actually going to be getting a couple of our own and giving this cage back to its owner because it's working out so well with these wild caught with this girl. And eventually, we'll probably put the male in there as well. That's pretty much it for this month. Sorry it was so long winded, but thanks as always for watching. We will um, catch up with you next month with hopefully more changes, more available babies. As always, feel free to leave comments, like our video, personal message us. You can always reach us on Facebook at SoCalHerps. Thanks so much for watching.